Today I'll be making my first tier list for the Stellar Crown Standard format, which will begin with Dortmund Regionals upcoming, and then uh, Louisville, Kentucky Regionals shortly thereafter, and uh, we have more events as well in the format across the globe. And you'll see here that I have a pretty comprehensive list of decks to put on this tier list. Um, so I will be putting the very best positioned decks, in my opinion, in the S tier, the worst positioned decks in the D tier, and then everything else in between. We're going to be starting with Charizard Pidgeot, and Charizard Pidgeot was very, very strong in the last format. It was just kept down by the overly popular Reggie Drago V-Star archetype. Um, and we'll have to see how Reggie Drago fares into this new metagame. I definitely think Reggie Drago V Star is still going to be a strong deck, uh, but potentially with Raging Bolt Ogre Pun getting a little bit stronger into a matchup like Charizard or a matchup like Dragapult, um, it, with the Raging Bolt deck being better now, um, that's Reggie Drago's one of its worst matchups in the metagame. So um, that might be what is causing Reggie Drago to maybe go down a little bit more and that could leave the metagame wide open for charizard pidgeot to reign supreme uh charizard pidgeot does gain the new briar card from stellar crown and uh it's just a very strong deck with a lot of options very very skilled players with this deck can do a lot with it um so i think it's one of the best positioned decks available Next, we have Raging Bolt Ogre Pond, which I'm also going to put into the top tier here. And you could treat tier S as tier one, tier A. Um, all that really matters is it's the highest tier available on my tier list today. The name of it really doesn't matter. Um, so like I said, Raging Bolt Ogre Pond gets a little bit better into this new metagame. Um, and it gains the same card that Charizard gains, which is Briar. Um, some Raging Bull Ogre Pond decks have also started to include Crispin as sort of like a fifth or sixth Professor Sadas. I'm not too sure on the Crispin, but the Briar is definitely very good and now allows you to take a one prizer to start against Charizard. And then on the last turn, when they're at two and you're at three, you could Briar Ogre Pond for game. It doesn't work all the time, but it is now at least a win condition into an otherwise unfavorable line against a tricky matchup to say the least. So I think Raging Bull Ogre Pond can really run through a lot of decks. It's just that kind of deck. It consistently sets up, consistently does a lot of damage. And now it has one more tool in, to add to its otherwise linear game strategy. So um, I do think Charizard and Raging Bolt are two of the decks to beat going into the Stellar Crown metagame. Now, going down to the next tier down with not too much space between tier the highest tier and the second highest tier, I'm putting Reggie Drago into the tier A, um, just under Charizard and Raging Bolt. We'll have to see if uh, Briar being added into Charizard and Bolt and Dragapult, which we'll get to, um, and Reggie Drago doesn't benefit from Briar in the same ways. Of course, it could attack with Briar with the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. Maybe we will see that implemented. But at the moment, it seems like Charizard and Raging Bolt and Dragapult all get significant boosts from being able to use Briar. And Dragapult EX actually gets significant boosts elsewhere, which we'll talk about. Um, so yeah, so those are kind of the reasons why I think Reggie Drago falls down a little. Um, at least it looks like it does. It's still a very, very aggressive deck with some very good options of attacks. Um, and, you know, if, if the top players that we've seen playing it, it Worlds and it Baltimore, you know, I, I think we had Andrew Hedrick playing it, Ian Robb playing it um, at Baltimore, uh, at Worlds, I believe, uh, Brent Tonneson, Natalie Millar um james cox i believe they all played it at world so you know a lot of strong players flocked to reggie drago um and you know began to master the deck so if the people who mastered it just stick with it um in favor instead of charizard pidgeot or raging bull or dragapult or one of the other top decks we have to choose from uh, then Reggie Drago could still dominate. So we'll have to see. I think it's going to be just slightly less poised to compete at the highest level than it was prior, but that's okay. I, we're getting some more variety into this uh, Stellar Crowd metagame. With Reggie Drago potentially going down, Raging Bolt potentially going up, Gardevoir we're going to put into the A tier. Gardevoir did just win the Baltimore Regionals, even in a field of Reggie Drago. 
um, and Henry Chow was able to make this new kind of almost turbo Gardevoir deck, which he fundamentally changed the game plan of Gardevoir, which it used to be, let's start attacking on turn three. Now, Ch Henry Chow's Gardevoir deck wants to start attacking on turn two with that secret box to find rare candy. Um, it's hard to say if that will be the leading variant of Gardevoir moving forward. I'd tend to guess that it won't be. Um, I, I would assume people will stick with the normal Gardevoir lists that we've uh, come to know in the uh, Shrouded Fable format, but we'll have to see if a lot of people pick up on Henry Chow's variant. Gardevoir is a strong deck. Um, it does require setup, uh, so it can be frail and fragile in the early turns, but typically if you can get it established and uh, the prize trade isn't too far out of reach, you can claw your way back into most games. Next is Ancient Box, and I think Ancient Box takes a pretty big hit from Briar. Um, and the reason is, is because now Raging Bull Ogre Pond has like a pretty realistic way to win against Ancient Box. Ancient Box used to be able to go down three to six prizes and still come back. Now it's going to need to reach the benchmark of coming back at four to six prizes because if ancient box can go down to two prizes while raging bolt is at two prizes then raging bolt can go briar ogre pun knockout and win the game um so yeah I, I do think that ancient box will suffer from raging bull ogre pond gaining briar um it could potentially suffer from charizard gaining briar but charizard was already a tough matchup and uh, just another note, I think Ancient Box is best built with the four Great Tusk. That was prior to this, even in Shrouded Fable, I think Ancient Box was best with four Great Tusk. You can do a hybrid mill strategy, um, at least for the cu first couple of turns, and then go in with Roaring Moon. And if the opponent stops playing around the mill strategy, you could weave that back in. So Ancient Box is still a deck, and definitely let it be known that, like, aside from the D tier on this deck, on this tier list, all these decks are pretty playable and viable into tournaments i i just stay away from whatever i put into the d tier um, which probably won't be that many decks to be honest next is maridon and maridon i am going to put into the b tier it's still a strong fast turbo deck but it has a bad matchup into charizard and has a bad matchup into raging bolt so although the deck inherently functions well and has some good intrinsic strengths um, it, it's just not great into the perceived meta game right now, so it's going to go into the B tier. Next is Dragapult Pidgeot, and that's going to go up into A with Reggie Drago and Gardevoir. Uh, Dragapult Pidgeot, it gains the Sparkling Crystal A spec, it gains Briar, it gains Crispin, and you know, it's gaining all these cards. You might say, wow, why is it only in A tier? Well, prior to this, it wasn't even a deck that I was really talking about much, to be honest. Um, if you brought up Dragapult, I'd say nine times out of 10, it's better just copy Dragapult with Reggie Drago V-Star. But now there's real reason to just use Dragapult EX itself. It has the Sparkling Crystal, which works on Terra Pokemon, doesn't work with Reggie Drago. It has the new Briar Supporter card, which doesn't work with Reggie Drago. And Dragapult has more health than Reggie Drago. So the metagame kind of started to become accustomed to knocking out Reggie Drago, looking for that 280 damage or the 220 on a Reggie Drago V. Um, whereas Dragapult Pidgeot can present a fully single prize board and then go into the two prizers when ready. Um, so Dragapult Pidgeot, there's a real reason to play this over Reggie Drago V Star now, which puts it into the A tier. Next up, we've got Lugia Archaeops, which I'm going to place into the A tier as well. Um, you know, these A tier decks, these are the decks that I think will um, definitely make it into day two of major events and will be fighting for those top eight spots. Whereas tier S, those are the decks that I'm expecting to be in top eight or being kind of like the gatekeepers of making top eight. Whereas these A tier decks, these are the ones trying to make it into there. And then the B tier decks, eh, they'll probably trickle into day two, but they're not really the competitors I expect to see trying to actually win the event at the end. And then C tier, it's like, eh, maybe they can make day two, but I don't think you have a very good chance of going far in day two with them. And then D tier, just probably don't play the D tier decks. Um, so yeah, Lugia Archaeops, strong deck. Um, if it sets up double Archaeops, there's not a lot your opponent can do. Uh, it's just very strong, especially with the Chinchino. I think Chinchino is 
you know, re really strong, right? That's, that's a very easy take to have. Chinchino can do massive amounts of damage and it's just a single prize attacker, stage one, pretty easy to set up as well. So uh, Lugia Archaeops will likely be a tier one, tier two at the very lowest threat um, until it rotates. So, you know, Lugia Archaeops will be around. It's a deck, it can do well. It's pretty strong. Um, if you're comfortable with it and you're not comfortable with other decks, it's still a fine play. It's not my favorite deck to play. It's not the most fun. I don't think it's the most likely to succeed deck, but it's sure in the running. Next is Turbo Roaring Moon, and I have this somewhere between A and B tier. Um, I think I'm going to put it at the top of B, um, because although it can do really well, it's not one of the decks I'm expecting to be at the top, uh, partially because of its poor matchup against Charizard, its poor matchup against Dragapult, um, Gardevoir is a matchup that typically comes down to your Pokemon Catcher coin flips, knocking out those Gardevoir EXs. Um, Raging Bolt isn't exactly an easy matchup. So the Turbo Roaring Moon, fast deck, very good at taking big knockouts. But um, if the opponent has ways to turn those knockouts into two, three, four prize turns, you know, Frenzied Gouging um, puts a lot of damage onto your own guy. So uh, decks with Dusk Noir can take advantage of that. Dragapult attacks can take advantage of that. Um, Gardevoir can take advantage of that. Although you, you'll never be using Frenzy Gouging against Gardevoir, but they could just take advantage of the prize trade in general with single prizers versus your double prizers. So uh, Turbo Roaring Moon, solid deck. Um, not one of the decks that I would be looking to put <laughs> put money on making uh, top cut or even like maybe top 16 placements. Can it do it? Sure. It could definitely high roll through. Um, it's a deck similar to Raging Bolt Ogre Pond, uh, whereas... It's good at just hitting hard very early in the game, and it can run over opponents just because of that. But Raging Bolt now has Briar uh, on its side, which I think is uh, a big boost that the other turbo decks are not getting. Snorlax Stall. We're going to put Snorlax Stall in the A tier as well. Um, Snorlax Stall should be looking pretty good against Raging Bolt Ogre Pond, against Charizard Pidgeot, against Dragapult Pidgeot. Um, against Reggie Drago, if they're untacked with Cologne, this becomes a more favored matchup. Um, so, yeah, Snorlax Stall is a necessary threat that's going to be around. If people don't tech for it, they could realistically lose to Snorlax. And, um, you know, if you tech for it, then maybe you don't even see Snorlax and you feel like you wasted that slot. So it does create another kind of layer to metagaming and deck lists. Um, you know, do you want to tech for this? threat that will be around in some capacity uh snorlax stall looks to be performing pretty well online um but again people are lazy to tech for decks like this when they're just trying to play some new lists and new archetypes in online events so uh snorlax stall could definitely show up in this meta game i definitely think it has a chance you know if people are not ready if people aren't tech for it snorlax stall can always make a good run just by getting like free wins against decks that just cannot deal with it and speaking of free wins that's a good time to talk about ogre pond noivern um unfortunately i actually hit two of these in baltimore day two and i was playing the same list as ian rob which we cut canceling cologne from in reggie drago v star so i lost to one and i actually was able to squeak out a tie against one of these um it just it's just four cornerstone ogre pond and a three two line of noivern the thing about this is is that if reggie drago plays cologne uh, it, it's and it, and it'll prize cologne and they are you know playing competently this is a straight farm for reggie drago in my opinion um and then also dragapult uh ogre pond noivern has nothing to deal with dragapult pidgeot so if even half of the reggie drago players convert into dragapult pidgeot players then ogre pond noivern like is is doing nothing so honestly into this upcoming metagame even where you know charizards might be playing cologne um reggie dragos commonly play cologne um I think we got to move this down to C tier now for this new format, and we're probably just going to need different kind of wall decks. This was a good deck for one tournament, um, but I think other walling decks are going to be better. Um, maybe like Aegislash. We could talk about Aegislash. I'm going to put this into C tier for now as well. Um, I've done some testing with it from the side of Charizard and from the side of Dragapult, and although on paper it looks like Aegislash should be able to beat these decks, 
um I, i'm able to find some loopholes you know we we can attack we can, we have the dusk noirs the dusk clops yeah so it, it's not unwinnable for these matchups where it's trying to really beat them and at the moment it looks like why play a kind of wall deck like this when you could just play snorlax stall with a couple cornerstones in it um snorlax stall just uh yeah if your opponent doesn't tech for it you just win and one more note again because i know people skip around in these videos a lot for the tiers uh d tier is like the only tier of deck that i'm telling you do not play do not play d tier decks c tier i don't think they're going to be successful but they could sneak in b tier you'll s probably see some of the b tiers in day two top uh then a tier these are the decks that are i 100 percent expect these to be in day two in some capacity and i also expect them to be kind of fighting for the top eight spots and then s tier i expect these decks to be in top eight so that's kind of the definition where uh the tier lists next is iron thorns um let's go ahead and keep iron thorns ex and b tier because looking at these decks it's good against charizard it's good against raging bolt it's good against reggie drago it's good against lugia it's not as good against dragapult um because dragapult has drag cloak um and if dragapult can just uh, get into one dragapult ex especially since they can attack for just one energy with sparkling crystal that's really good i feel like dragapult should be able to get through iron thorns and then gardevoir is also good against iron thorns so iron thorns has some good matchups up here has some bad matchups out here uh, and that's why it goes into the b tier terrapagos pidgeot um, i'm seeing success from it online we didn't really see a lot from it in japan maybe they just were not building the deck lists right that's always definitely a uh, a possibility but i'm gonna put terrapagos pidgeot in b tier and i'm also going to put turbo terrapagos or terrapagos dusk noir into the b tier as well um i've actually been impressed by terrapagos dusk noir um there's a list that isaiah bradner tweeted and what i like about the list is it's built to beat it's built to win the game in two attacking turns so if you go first you're trying to win on turn three if you go second uh you're, you're still trying to win on turn three because you really can't attack with this deck much on turn two since terrapagos has that clause on its attack that says you can't attack if this is your first turn going second with this card um but between all of the dusk noirs terrapagos just being a one easy a one energy easy attacker um the stadium giving you more bench space to work with the noctowls just searching the candies the stretchers the things that you need um it's a really really interesting turbo deck that might be better than i'm giving it credit for right now but i definitely think it's good it's definitely solid at the very least um I'm just not sure if it's really better than, uh, you know, Charizard, Raging Bolt, maybe some of the A tier decks. Like, I'm really looking at decks and thinking, is this better than playing Charizard or Raging Bolt or Drago? Like, those are kind of the three that I'm looking at right now. Like, uh, are you doing anything better than these decks are? And maybe Dragapult. Um, and then for control kind of strategies, are you doing things better than Snorlax Stall? Speaking of control type strategies, Pidgeot control has a place in B tier. Um, it can kind of take wins against the same things that Snorlax stall can and even squeak out wins against the other stuff just because Pidgeot control has a lot of text and a lot of lines and a lot of uh, playability built into it. Uh, the thing is, is that Pidgeot control is never going to be popular. It's never going to be a deck that... Um, people with average experience can pick up and realistically make a great finish out of it takes very 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 meticulous play with this deck meticulous preparation of your matchup concepts uh to really see success with it so i do think it's held back by its very high skill floor but it also does have a very very high skill ceiling um so it's a deck that's kind of always out there you could always expect that you know one good player might play it and do well with it um and we, we see this all the time so pidgeot control will stick into the b tier lost box charizard um lost box sablezard was having a, a pretty good meta spread outside of drago last format and just having a bad matchup to drago is enough to keep you out in last format but we don't know if it's going to be like that in this upcoming format 
Um, so I could very easily see Lost Box Sablezard coming up to B tier potentially if Reggie Drago does fall off in popularity. Um, the Charizard Pidgeot matchup isn't easy, uh, but you can definitely tech for it. Play Devos, um, play, you know, uh, probably Devo <laughs> is the best, best way to combat the Charizard Pidgeot matchup. Um, so yeah, Lost Box Sablezard, I think it's fine. Um, other Lost Box decks I probably also put into B. We'll just add that real quick. Um, because, you know, it's a whole new world now if Reggie Drago is not as popular as it was. So we'll toss Lost Zone Box into B as well. Um, but, you know, if Reggie Drago shoots up in popularity, it keeps getting 10, 12, 14%, then, uh, this tier list definitely adjusts a little bit for the decks that are really really bad against reggie drago v star and uh i, I think we're going to end up having a pretty large b tier here because i think there's a lot of decks that uh are viable at that level you know they're not the best decks in format but they can make day two they can give it a, a, a give it a fair shot um and chi and palback caliber is going to be one of those you know we saw lucas zing get top 16 at worlds with chi and palback caliber even when it was completely counted out um top 16 at worlds i probably shouldn't have to say this but it is not easy to do top 16 at worlds is a ma major achievement um so chi and palback caliber I, I think it still has some gas in it it's not one of my favorite decks but to say that it can't make day two and put up a competitive fight would be lying. I, I definitely think it falls into this B tier. So it might throw some of you off guard to see such a large B tier, um, but until this format becomes more concrete, we do have a lot of viable decks here. You know, a couple of these might shoot up into A, a lot of them will probably fall down into C or D. Um, if I was separating this out even more, then we could have you know some of these drop down into like a B.5, or if we had an F, then we could drop some of them down into C. But with an S to D, um, I really do think all these decks kind of fit into the B tier. Um, next, we have Palkia Dusk Noir. Um, I do think that Palkia Dusk Noir gets outclassed by Terrapagos Dusk Noir now, um, which is why I'm going to put Palkia Dusk Noir into C. I know it did have a pretty good finish at Baltimore, piloted by um, a veteran of the game, which definitely probably helped Palkia Dusknor do well that it was piloted by such an experienced player um, but I'm going to put Palkia Dusknor into C tier because I do think it is going to get outclassed by Terrapagos Dusknor although if nobody plays Terrapagos Dusknor and people play Palkia Dusknor it can't really get outclassed so we're going to need Terrapagos Dusknor to actually show up for this prediction to be correct um, I'm going to put Palkia Noctowl into tier B as well uh, I think it's a solid deck um, you know, Palkia comes along with Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken. You can also use like Glass Trumpet plus Chi and Pal. You could use Wellspring Ogre Pond in here. Um, and Noctowl is just a card that's going to let you consistently do the things you want to do on turn two, uh, which I, you know, that kind of gives the deck a very baseline of inherent strength and functioning. Uh, Hydrapple Ogre Pond, just, I, I think it's probably just a meme deck. Um, you know, maybe you're okay into Charizard Pidgeot, but like, um, you're gonna be bad against Raging Bolt. You're gonna be bad against uh, Turbo Roaring Moon. You're gonna, um, you're gonna be bad against the other two prizers that can take one shots against you with kind of ease. Um, and yeah, it, it seems like not enough payoff for putting a stage two into play because we, as we know, stage twos can be very, very strong. We've got Charizard Pidgeot, we've got Dragapult Pidgeot, we've got Gardevoir. Um, you know, Dust Noir, obviously, which is kind of an exception to tier to stage twos, but stage twos can also be awful because of how much they take to get set up. So I'm going to put it into D tier. Um, I'm going to put Galvantula into C because it's a deck that has not been, uh, developed quite yet. I think, um, Isaiah Chevelle has a good article about it on Polka Beach with a pretty playable list that's realistic about what it's trying to do. Um, I'm also going to put Arceus Armorouge into C tier. I actually played against one of these in Baltimore, uh, round 10, round one of day two. Um, it has, you know, it has some functioning. It has a, a lot of different tools that it could use. The Monkey Dory with Luminous Energy, Delphox V, Iron Hands, Ryko V. The Luminous Energy does a lot for that deck. Um, not crazy about it, but it's, it's viable. It, it's playable at the very least, like 
uh, like everything in here in C tier is. The C tier are the decks that I'm not expecting to make day two. They're not a total surprise if they make day two. Um, and then I'm tossing Dragapult Zatu in as our last deck here on the list. Dragapult Zatu, I don't know what would ever drive somebody to play Dragapult Zatu instead of Dragapult Pidgeot. I might even consider Dragapult Lost Zone, which isn't even on the list, before I consider Dragapult Zatu. Um, so, yeah, just play Pidgeot instead of Zatu. I don't, I don't understand that one, especially now that we have Sparkling Crystal. So, yeah, this is my tier list for now. Um, I don't think I have any hot takes. I think it looks pretty, uh, pretty solid. We probably won't see a lot of changes to this with the decks that are on here. Maybe some new decks will pop up and be added. But this is what I think about the Stellar Crown format. Um, we're a little less than a week away from Dortmund Regionals, so created on September 22nd, Trainer Hill goes. This is a nice time, time stamp. Um, I did not use the meta share input where we can predict the totals. Um, I'll do that for Louisville, for the Kentucky Regionals. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Check out ways to support my channel in the description down below, as well as free articles on my Substack. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Pokemon TCG content like this. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.